So, using TPM keys. Um, because the question of what do we use each TPM for, uh, each key for and when, um, is complicated and detailed and, and really specialized, we're going to be covering that tomorrow. So here, we're just going to be covering the common technique of what does it mean to use a TPM key generically. So I talked earlier today about the fact that the endorsement key and the storage root key are stored directly in the TPM. The endorsement key is never used directly. It is only used um, in a command called activate identity, which is part of the PCA protocol. Um, and you don't say, use the endorsement key. It's activate identity. It's all it does. Um, the storage root key um, is always in a predefined location in key storage. And other keys are stored in uh, partially encrypted blobs somewhere outside the TPM. So in order for me to use one of those non-root keys, I need to load it into the TPM. What loading does is it decrypts the private half of the key and places that in the volatile storage of the TPM. Um, the user then receives what's called a key handle that points to what location in that volatile storage uh, the key is at. Um, key handles are then what you hand the TBM for any future command that use the key. Um, it is important to note that handles are volatile. Um, remember how I said the TBM had pretty small storage space? If you are using a lot of TPM keys, as I said, this is not a scenario we've ever run into yet, um, a key may re be removed if the storage is filled. A key may be removed on a reboot. It's supposed to be, but not all TPMs do. Um, if you are running a high-level TPM service, like tr uh, trousers, things that use the trusted software stack, um, I've heard the TBS may do this. I'm not sure. Um, the TPM services want to do key handle management for you. So that if I'm writing an application, even if I'm doing a complicated database with 100 keys, I have a consistent handle that always means key X, even if key X is being cycled in and out of the TPM. Um, what this means is that handle manipulation is a potential attack. Um, because when I send a request to the TPM using a high-level service, um, the handle is getting changed anyway. So the handle is not like signed as part of the integrity protection of the command. Realistically, this is not an attack we ever worry about because um, if you try and use a different key, all it takes to break a handle, uh, a handle swapping attack is using a different authorization value. Because the password for key A cannot freely be used with key B. So if you are worried about this for some reason, just go ahead and use different authorization values or different pieces. Any kind of constraint on a key that differs between two keys means you can't do a handle manipulation attack meaningfully. Um, so the load key command, this is actually load key 2, because we're at TPM 1.2. There are some commands that end in 2 that are new. The original load key command is deprecated. Um, takes two arguments, the key that you're going to load, which is to say a key blob, and the parent, which is a key handle. Um, the parent is the key that's going to be used to decrypt the private half. Often, um, especially for keys that you're creating early, unless you're doing complicated hierarchies, the parent is almost always going to be the SRK for most applications we've seen today. Um, the TPM will perform a certain set of integrity and sanity checks, making sure that once I've decrypted the key, it is actually the type that the wrapper said it was going to be, and all the integrity checks check out, and the parent is actually the parent key. Then it will load the key into memory and return the handle. Um, one of the areas that we see people getting confused a lot is if I have a, a key that is PCR constrained and a parent that is PCR constrained, and the key that I'm loading has PCR constraints X and the parent has PCR constraints Y, I will succeed in a load key operation if the current PCR values are Y, but not if the current PCR values are X because the loaded key is not being used. The parent is being used because the parent is decrypting the child. So um, there you go. If you load a key whose constraints don't apply, that's fine. You just can't load them until they do. Um, similarly, you need the authorization of the parent, um, not the authorization of the child. 
Um, this also does mean that if you want to play fancy games with ordering in a system, what you can do is create a, you know, you have a parent key with PCR constraints Y. You load a child, you extend a PCR value. The parent is no longer usable. You may have just enabled the child. So there are things that you can do if you want to make sure time only goes forward by using PCR constraints and parents and children because once the key is loaded, I'm not using the parent anymore. So the fact that its constraints don't apply is irrelevant. So this is a kind of a special purpose thing, but it's something you can do even if you're not using PCRs for state verification. You can use it for this kind of timing. It, it's static. It's static. It's static. So is the software responsible for managing long-term private key storage, or can the TPM manage that? Um, so as in, if I want a private key to be managed for like several months, can the TPM manage it, or is that part of the software's job? Ah, where do you get the blob that you give to load key? Um, that really depends on your application. In general, the software is responsible for it. Um, some TPMs support software, like Trousers, does have internal key storage that can do long-term key management. Some, if you are working directly with a TPM driver, do not. Um, even if Trousers does it for you, I'm kind of paranoid. I like to write my keys to disk anyway, but Trouser, I have talked to people who have used Trousers and, and just done not even realize they ought to be storing the blobs themselves, because after all, Trousers just did it for them and that was that. Um, but it's really application dependent. The blob is outside the TPM. Um, frankly, this is the point that I say, I'm the TPM expert. I don't care where you store your data. But um, some applications might want to say, you know, we're an enterprise. We will always store it in directory X within our Windows system registry. Um, some places might say, we are a networked application. As part of the registration for our application, we want you to create a TPM storage key, and then you're going to send it to us whenever we want to send you data. We will encrypt it with your TPM key, and then um, send both that key blob and the encrypted data off to your TPM, and we're not concerned about anybody reading all of this because, after all, only you can load that key. Um, and really anything in between. We, we don't particularly care. Does that answer your question? I've got a follow-up question to that, then. So okay. I guess my question would be, is it yes. even possible to have some AIK, for instance, which you basically tell the TPM, just keep this thing loaded after you reboot any time, is it possible to keep something long term like that other than the, the core key? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, it is, you have to do it deliberately. It's a command called owner evict or set owner evict. Um, the owner has to do it or somebody where the owner has delegated permissions to them. Um, so generally, if you're going to want to do this, this is probably part of your initial setup. Uh, what that does is it, you hand it a, the handle of a currently loaded key and the owner authorization. And a flag is set such that that key will never be pushed out of the volatile key storage until the owner explicitly says to evict it. So if you are looking at, at scenarios where there's one key or a couple of keys that are all you ever use and you want to make sure that they're always there and they're reliable and you don't want to worry about the headache of tracking them, you can set them to be owner evict and they will just stay there indefinitely. All right, cool. That's what I was wondering about. It isn't something that I talk about too much in part because if you do owner evict all the keys, you may eventually get yourself to a point where you can't load any new ones. Um, it is a tremendously handy thing to do if you are doing 
uh, you know, if for some reason you don't trust your disk or you don't think you'll have access to your disk or um, you're a low-level application that you want to keep your the number of operations to a minimum or you're worried about your users deleting your keys, but generally you want to do this for a couple of keys, not for 10. So once you've got a loaded key, you can just hand the handle as part of any other TPM commands. Most TPM commands are constrained as to which kinds of keys they'll accept. Um, so for example, you can't call TPM sign with a storage key, it'll reject that as, as having the wrong type. Similarly, you can't use a signing key as, as a parent if I'm creating a new key. Um, every time a key is used, where you hand it the handle and the command says you pass the basic sanity check, that's when we check PCR constraints, locality constraints, and authorization data. And all three of these have to, to be met in order for this to, for, for the key to actually be used. So for the rest of the class, I'm just going to use the convenient shorthand that says use an X key. And when I say that, I am implying that you have loaded it, that you are handing it to a relevant command, and that the relevant constraints are met. So there you go. This seems like the most intuitive thing I have to find today, frankly. So half an hour early, are there any questions? No. An AIK can never sign anything that does not come from the TBM. Okay. If you wanted to, to have an AIK with, a, with an X509 cert, yeah. you would have to either certify it by that provisioning process approach where I take the public key and I hand it directly to the CA and say, my process is good, I, I promise okay. you this is a TPM key. Right. Or you need to run the PCA protocol well, I would and just have the format of the certificate you're returning right. to x 509 Oh, you can do that? Yeah, the, the, oh, okay. the TPM doesn't check the format of that certificate uh, at all, okay. which is part of why I, I so, pointed so out gonna... that it's technically a wrapper. The PCA protocol is completely agnostic about certificate format. Okay. It just cares about the ability to yeah. encrypt messages in both directions.